In the chaos of modern life, worry has become a constant companion for many. But what if we could learn to tame this beast, to transform worry into a source of strength and resilience? This series, inspired by Dale Carnegie's timeless wisdom and the ancient philosophy of Stoicism, will equip you with practical tools and techniques to break free from the shackles of worry and create a life of peace, joy and fulfillment. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and leave a comment below saying, keep it up to show your support. Your encouragement means the world to us. Now, let's dive into lesson one and uncover the fundamental facts you need to know about worry. Lesson one, fundamental facts you should know about worry. Your worry survival kit. All right, folks, let's talk about worry. We all do it, right? It's like that annoying house guest who overstays their welcome, leaving dirty dishes in the sink and emotional turmoil in their wake. But here's the thing. Worry is a universal human experience, a natural response to uncertainty and fear. Even the ancient Stoics, those paragons of emotional resilience, recognize the inevitability of worry. But they also understood that worry left unchecked can become a destructive force, a mental parasite that feeds on our energy, our joy and our peace of mind. As the Stoic philosopher Seneca put it, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. In other words, our worries often cause us more pain than the actual events we're worried about. So, how do we deal with this worry monster? How do we tame it, manage it, and prevent it from wreaking havoc on our lives? That's where understanding the fundamental facts about worry comes in. First and foremost, worry is often rooted in fear of the unknown. We worry about the future, about what might happen, about things we can't control. This is a natural human tendency, but it's also a recipe for anxiety and stress. As the modern-day spiritual teacher Eckhart Tolle puts it, worry pretends to be necessary, but serves no useful purpose. When we worry, we're essentially projecting ourselves into a future that hasn't happened yet, creating scenarios that may never come to pass. We're borrowing trouble from tomorrow, robbing ourselves of the joy and peace of the present moment. Secondly, worry is often fueled by our own thoughts and beliefs. We tell ourselves stories about what's wrong, what could go wrong, and why we're not good enough. These stories become self-fulfilling prophecies, creating a negative feedback loop that reinforces our fears and anxieties. The Buddha said, we are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make the world. This is a powerful reminder that our thoughts have a direct impact on our reality and that by changing our thoughts, we can change our experience of life. Thirdly, worry is often a habit, a learned behavior that we've reinforced over time. We've become so accustomed to worrying that it feels like a natural part of who we are. But just like any habit, worry can be broken. It takes awareness, effort, and a willingness to change. As the modern-day self-help author Tony Robbins says, the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your questions. When we ask ourselves empowering questions, like, what can I learn from this situation? Or, how can I turn this challenge into an opportunity? We shift our focus from worry to problem solving, from fear to empowerment. So, what are the fundamental facts we need to know about worry? 1. Worry is often rooted in fear of the unknown. 2. Worry is fueled by our own thoughts and beliefs. 3. Worry is a habit that can be broken. By understanding these facts, we can start to develop a healthier relationship with worry. We can learn to recognize it for what it is. A mental construct, not a reality. And we can choose to focus on the present moment, 
on the things we can control and on the positive aspects of our lives. Remember, as the great Winston Churchill said, when I look back on all these worries, I remember the story of the old man who said on his deathbed that he had had a lot of trouble in his life, most of which never happened. So let's not waste our precious time and energy on worries that may never come to pass. Let's focus on living in the present moment, embracing the challenges and opportunities that come our way, and creating a life that's filled with joy, meaning and purpose. Lesson 2. Basic Techniques in Analyzing Worry, Your Worry Decoder Ring All right, worry warriors, let's get down to brass tacks. We all know that worry can feel like a tangled ball of yarn, a chaotic mess of thoughts and emotions that leaves us feeling overwhelmed and paralyzed. But what if I told you there's a way to untangle that mess, to decode the cryptic messages of worry, and to transform those anxious thoughts into actionable solutions. That's where the basic techniques of worry analysis come in. Think of them as your worry decoder ring, a set of tools that can help you decipher the hidden meanings behind your worries and develop a plan of attack. Now, this isn't some new age mumbo jumbo or a quick fix for all your problems. This is about tapping into a timeless wisdom that's been around for centuries. A wisdom that's been embraced by philosophers, scientists, and everyday people alike. The ancient Greeks, those masters of logic and reason, understood the importance of analyzing our worries. The philosopher Socrates famously said, The unexamined life is not worth living. This doesn't mean we need to obsess over every little worry. But it does mean that we need to take a closer look at our anxieties and understand what's driving them. In the modern world, this concept is echoed by the cognitive behavioral therapist Dr. David D. Burns, who developed the widely used technique of cognitive restructuring. He says, The way we think about a problem is often the problem. By identifying and challenging our negative thought patterns, we can change our emotional experience and create a more positive and empowering reality. So, what are the basic techniques for analyzing worry? Let's break it down. 1. Get the facts. This might seem obvious, but when we're worried, our minds tend to run wild with worst-case scenarios and catastrophic thinking. By gathering the facts, we can ground ourselves in reality and gain a clearer perspective on the situation. 2. Analyze the facts. Once we have the facts, we need to analyze them objectively without letting our emotions cloud our judgment. This involves looking at the situation from different angles, considering all possible outcomes and weighing the pros and cons. 3. Arrive at a decision. Based on our analysis of the facts, we need to make a decision about how to proceed. This might mean taking action, seeking help, or simply accepting the situation and moving on. The key is to make a decision and then act on it, rather than getting stuck in a cycle of indecision and rumination. Now, let's be real. This process isn't always easy. When we're in the throes of worry, our emotions can feel overwhelming and our thoughts can seem like a runaway train. But by taking a step back, applying these basic techniques and engaging our rational minds, we can regain control and find a path forward. Think of it like a pilot navigating a storm. They don't panic or give up. They use their training their instruments and their knowledge of the weather to navigate through the turbulence and reach their destination safely. Similarly, when we're facing a storm of worry, we can use the tools of worry analysis to navigate through the emotional turbulence and find our way to calmer waters. Remember, as the great Winston Churchill said, success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. 
So don't let worry defeat you. Embrace the challenge, apply these techniques, and keep moving forward. Your resilience, your peace of mind, and your ultimate success depend on it. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and leave a comment below saying, keep it up to show your support. Your encouragement means the world to us. A lesson three, breaking the worry habit, your stoic toolkit for a stress-free life. All right, worry warriors, let's have a heart to heart about something that plagues us all, the worry habit. It's like a pesky mosquito buzzing around your head, a persistent itch you can't quite scratch, a nagging voice whispering doubts and fears in your ear. But here's the thing, worry isn't just an annoyance, it's a thief, robbing you of joy, peace, and even your health. The ancient Stoics, those wise philosophers who knew a thing or two about tranquility, understood the destructive power of worry. Seneca, the Stoic statesman, said, We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. In other words, our worries often cause us more pain than the actual events we are worried about. But fear not, my friends, because the Stoics also offered us a powerful antidote to worry, a set of practical techniques that can help us break the worry habit before it breaks us. 1. Live in daytight compartments. This concept, popularized by Sir William Osler, is about focusing on the present moment rather than dwelling on the past or fretting about the future. It's like compartmentalizing a ship to prevent flooding. You seal off the past and future so you can focus on navigating the present moment with clarity and purpose. In our modern lives, this might mean setting aside specific times for worry, scheduling worry sessions where you allow yourself to indulge in your anxieties, but then closing the door on them when the session is over. It's about creating mental boundaries that protect your present moment from the invasion of worries. 2. Apply a magic formula. Willis H. Carrier, the brilliant engineer who invented air conditioning, developed a three-step formula for dealing with worry. 1. Analyze the situation fearlessly and honestly and figure out the worst that could possibly happen. 2. Reconcile yourself to accepting the worst, if necessary. 3. Calmly devote your time and energy to trying to improve upon the worst. This formula is like a fire extinguisher for your worries. It helps you face your fears head-on, accept the worst-case scenario, and then focus on finding solutions. It's a way to turn worry into action, fear into courage, and problems into possibilities. 3. Crowd. Worry. Out of your mind. This is about keeping yourself so busy with meaningful activities that you don't have time to worry. It's like filling a cup with water so there's no room for anything else. In our modern lives, this might mean taking up a new hobby, volunteering for a cause you care about, spending time with loved ones, or simply immersing yourself in work you enjoy. It's about finding activities that engage your mind, body and spirit, leaving no room for worry to creep in. These are just a few of the stoic techniques that can help you break the worry habit. Remember, as the modern-day psychologist and author Dr. Susan Jeffers says, feel the fear and do it anyway. Don't let worry hold you back from living your best life. Embrace these tools, take action, and watch as your worries begin to fade away. Lesson 4. Seven ways to cultivate a mental attitude that will bring you peace and happiness. Your stoic roadmap to inner bliss. All right, seekers of serenity, let's talk about something we all crave, peace and happiness. Now, before you roll your eyes and dismiss this as another fluffy self-help cliche, let me assure you, this is about tapping into ancient wisdom 
that's as relevant today as it was thousands of years ago. The Stoics, those wise philosophers who knew a thing or two about living a good life, believed that happiness isn't about external circumstances, but about our inner state of mind. As Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor of Rome, put it, our life is what our thoughts make it. In other words, we have the power to create our own happiness by cultivating a positive mental attitude. But let's be real, maintaining a positive mindset in today's chaotic world can feel like an uphill battle. We're bombarded with negativity, stress and uncertainty, making it all too easy to fall into the trap of worry, anxiety and despair. So, how do we break free from this negativity spiral and create a mental attitude that fosters peace and happiness? The Stoics offered us a roadmap, a set of seven principles that can guide us on our journey to inner bliss. One, think and act cheerfully. This might sound like a no-brainer, but it's amazing how often we forget the power of a simple smile, a kind word or a positive thought. As the modern-day psychologist and author Sean Accor says, happiness inspires productivity. When we choose to focus on the good, we create an upward spiral of positivity that can transform our entire lives. 2. Let go of resentment. Holding on to anger and resentment is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. It only hurts us poisoning our minds and bodies with stress and negativity. As the Dalai Lama says, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. Forgiveness is a gift we give ourselves, a way to release the burden of anger and create space for peace and healing. 3. Expect and embrace ingratitude. Let's face it, not everyone is going to appreciate our kindness, our generosity or our hard work. But that's okay. As the Stoics taught us, virtue is its own reward. When we give without expecting anything in return, we free ourselves from the disappointment and resentment that often accompany unmet expectations. 4. Count your blessings. In the hustle and bustle of modern life, it's easy to lose sight of the many blessings we have, but taking time each day to reflect on the good things in our lives can have a profound impact on our mental and emotional well-being. As Oprah Winfrey says, be thankful for what you have. You'll end up having more. If you concentrate on what you don't have, you will never, ever have enough. 5. Be yourself. In a world that's constantly telling us who we should be, what we should look like, and how we should behave, it's easy to lose sight of our authentic selves. But as the poet Oscar Wilde said, Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. When we embrace our unique quirks, talents and passions, we tap into a source of joy and fulfillment that can't be found anywhere else. 6 turn lemons into lemonade. Life is full of challenges and setbacks, but it's how we respond to those challenges that defines us. As the saying goes, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. This is about finding the opportunity in every obstacle, the silver lining in every cloud. It's about turning adversity into advantage and using our challenges as fuel for growth. 7. Focus on helping others. When we shift our focus from our own problems to the needs of others, we tap into a wellspring of compassion, purpose and meaning. As Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. By helping others, we not only make a difference in the world, but we also enrich our own lives in countless ways. These seven Stoic principles are not just philosophical abstractions, they're practical tools that you can apply to your daily life. 
By incorporating them into your routine, you can cultivate a mental attitude that fosters peace, happiness, and resilience. It's not about being perfect, it's about progress, about taking small steps each day towards a more fulfilling and joyful life. Remember, as the modern-day stoic Ryan Holiday says, the obstacle is the way. The challenges we face are not roadblocks, they're stepping stones on our path to growth. So, embrace the journey, my friends, and let the wisdom of the Stoics guide you towards a life of peace, happiness, and unwavering inner strength. Lesson 5. The Golden Rule for Conquering Worry, Your Stoic Shield Against Anxiety All right, worry warriors, Let's talk about a golden nugget of wisdom that can transform your relationship with worry, the golden rule. You know, that timeless principle that says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's a concept found in nearly every major religion and ethical system. And it's not just about being a good person. It's also a powerful tool for conquering worry. Now, before you roll your eyes and dismiss this as Sunday school fluff, let me explain. When we're consumed by worry, our focus tends to be inward on ourselves and our problems. We get caught up in a loop of what ifs and why me's, fueling our anxiety and creating a sense of isolation. But the golden rule offers a radical shift in perspective. It invites us to turn our attention outward, to consider the needs and feelings of others, and to act with kindness, compassion, and empathy. The ancient Stoics, those masters of emotional resilience, understood the power of this outward focus. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, wrote in his meditations, The best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. In other words, the most effective way to deal with negativity is not to retaliate with more negativity, but to respond with kindness and understanding. In the modern world, this concept is echoed by the psychologist and author Dr. Rick Hansen, who emphasizes the importance of taking in the good. He says, when you focus on the positive, you're not just making yourself feel better, you're actually changing your brain. By practicing gratitude, kindness, and compassion, we can rewire our brains for happiness and well-being. So how can we apply the golden rule to conquer worry? Here are a few practical tips. 1. Practice empathy. Put yourself in the shoes of the person you're worried about. How would you want to be treated if you were in their situation? What words of comfort or encouragement would you like to hear? By practicing empathy, we can shift our focus from our own anxieties to the needs of others, creating a sense of connection and compassion that can dissolve worry. 2. Perform acts of kindness. When we do something kind for someone else, we not only brighten their day, but also boost our own mood. Studies have shown that acts of kindness can release endorphins, the feel-good hormones, and reduce stress and anxiety. So whether it's volunteering your time, offering a helping hand, or simply giving a compliment, make a conscious effort to spread kindness wherever you go. 3. Cultivate gratitude. When we focus on what we're grateful for, we shift our attention away from lack and towards abundance. This can have a profound impact on our mental and emotional state, reducing worry and increasing happiness. As the author Melody Beatty says, gratitude turns what we have into enough. By applying the golden rule to our lives, we not only become better people, but we also create a more positive and fulfilling reality for ourselves. It's like a boomerang of goodness, when we send out positive energy into the world, it inevitably comes back to us. Remember, as the great Mahatma Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. 
So let go of your worries, embrace the golden rule, and start spreading kindness, compassion, and gratitude. You'll be amazed at how much lighter, brighter, and more joyful your life becomes. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and leave a comment below saying, keep it up to show your support. Your encouragement means the world to us. Lesson 6. How to keep from worrying about criticism. Your stoic armor against the haters. All right, my fellow philosophers of fortitude, let's talk about something that can sting worse than a jellyfish. Criticism. We all crave validation and approval, but the harsh truth is, not everyone is going to like us, our work, or our choices. And that's okay. In fact, the ancient Stoics, those masters of emotional resilience, would argue that criticism, especially the unjust kind, is not only inevitable, but can actually be a sign of your own success and virtue. Think of it like this. You're a majestic oak tree, standing tall and proud in the forest. You provide shade, shelter and nourishment to countless creatures, but you also attract the attention of woodpeckers who peck at your bark, squirrels who hoard your acorns, and the occasional lumberjack who might threaten to chop you down. But do you let these criticisms deter you? Do you shrink and wither away in the face of negativity? No. You stand tall, rooted in your strength and purpose, knowing that your value is not determined by the opinions of others. The Stoics, like the philosopher Epictetus, understood this well. He said, If anyone tells you that a certain person speaks ill of you, do not make excuses about what is said of you, but answer, He was ignorant of my other faults, else he would not have mentioned these alone. In other words, don't let the haters get you down. Instead, use their criticism as an opportunity for self-reflection and growth. In the modern world, this concept is echoed by the author and speaker, Brene Brown, who encourages us to embrace vulnerability and imperfection. She says, if you're not in the arena also getting your ass kicked, I'm not interested in your feedback. In other words, Criticism from those who aren't willing to put themselves out there is meaningless. So, how do we keep from worrying about criticism? Here are a few Stoic-inspired strategies. 1. Remember, no one kicks a dead dog. This might sound harsh, but it's a reminder that criticism often comes with the territory of success. The more you put yourself out there, the more you'll attract both praise and criticism. So, don't let the naysayers discourage you. Instead, see their criticism as a sign that you're making an impact. 2. Do your best, then let it go. Focus on doing your best work, living in alignment with your values and making a positive contribution to the world. Once you've done that, let go of the outcome. As the Stoics taught us, the only thing we can truly control is our own actions and choices. 3. Keep a record of your fool things. We all make mistakes, but the wise person learns from them. Keep a journal of your own shortcomings and use it as a tool for self-improvement. By acknowledging our flaws, we can work on overcoming them and becoming better versions of ourselves. 4. Ask for unbiased feedback. Seek out constructive criticism from people you trust and respect. This can help you identify blind spots, improve your skills, and grow as a person. But remember, not all feedback is created equal. Be selective about whose opinions you value and don't let negativity derail your progress. By applying these stoic principles, you can develop a thick skin, a resilient spirit, and an unwavering sense of self-worth. You can learn to use criticism as fuel for growth, rather than letting it dampen your spirit 
or derail your dreams. Remember, as the great Theodore Roosevelt said, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions? Who spends himself in a worthy cause? Who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement? And who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Lesson 7. Six ways to prevent fatigue and worry and keep your energy and spirits high. Your stoic energy elixir. All right, my fellow energy enthusiasts, let's talk about something we all crave. Boundless energy and sky-high spirits. Now, before you reach for that third cup of coffee or that sugary energy drink, let me offer you a more sustainable and soul-nourishing solution. The ancient Stoics, those wise philosophers who knew a thing or two about living a good life, understood the importance of maintaining physical and mental energy. They recognized that fatigue and worry are not only draining, but can also lead to a host of other problems, from poor decision-making to illness and even premature aging. But they also offered us a powerful antidote, a set of six principles that can help us prevent fatigue banish worry, and cultivate a vibrant and joyful life. Think of it as your stoic energy elixir, a potent blend of ancient wisdom and modern science that can supercharge your well-being. 1. Rest before you get tired. This might sound counterintuitive, but the Stoics believe that prevention is key when it comes to fatigue. By taking regular breaks, prioritizing sleep, and listening to our body's signals, we can avoid burnout and maintain our energy levels throughout the day. In our modern lives, this might mean scheduling short breaks throughout the workday, taking a power nap in the afternoon, or simply stepping away from our screens and getting some fresh air. It's about honoring our body's need for rest and rejuvenation so we can show up as our best selves. Two. Learn to relax at your work. This isn't about slacking off or being unproductive. It's about finding ways to reduce stress and tension in the workplace. This might involve practicing mindfulness, taking deep breaths, or simply adjusting your posture and ergonomics. The Stoics believed that our minds and bodies are interconnected and that by relaxing our bodies, we can calm our minds and reduce worry. So, the next time you're feeling stressed at work, take a few minutes to stretch, breathe deeply, and let go of tension. 3. Learn to relax at home. Just as it's important to relax at work, it's equally important to unwind and de-stress at home. This might involve spending time with loved ones, engaging in hobbies, or simply taking some time for yourself to recharge. The Stoics believed that our homes should be our sanctuaries, places where we can find peace and tranquility. So, create a relaxing atmosphere in your home, fill it with things you love, and make it a place where you can truly unwind and recharge. 4. Apply four good working habits. 1. Clear your desk of all papers except those relating to the immediate problem at hand. This helps you focus on the task at hand and avoid feeling overwhelmed by clutter. 2. Do things in the order of their importance. This ensures that you're prioritizing the most important tasks and not wasting time on trivial matters. 3. When you face a problem, solve it then and there if you have the facts necessary to make a decision. 
This prevents problems from piling up and causing unnecessary stress. 4. Learn to organize, deputize, and supervise. This allows you to delegate tasks, share responsibility, and avoid burnout. 5. Put enthusiasm into your work. The Stoics believed that we should approach our work with a sense of purpose and passion. When we're engaged and enthusiastic about what we're doing, we're less likely to feel fatigued or stressed. So, find ways to connect with your work on a deeper level, whether it's by setting meaningful goals, finding creative solutions, or simply appreciating the value you bring to the table. 6. Remember, no one was ever killed by lack of sleep. While getting enough sleep is important, worrying about not getting enough sleep can actually make it harder to fall asleep and lead to insomnia. So, if you're having trouble sleeping, don't stress about it. Relax, focus on your breath, and trust that your body will get the rest it needs. By incorporating these six stoic principles into your life, you can create a powerful energy elixir that will not only prevent fatigue and worry, but also boost your overall well-being. It's not about becoming a superhuman. It's about tapping into your innate resilience, wisdom and joy. Remember, as the modern-day stoic Ryan Holiday says, the obstacle is the way. The challenges we face, including fatigue and worry, are not roadblocks. They're opportunities for growth and transformation. So, embrace the journey, my friends, and let the wisdom of the Stoics guide you towards a life of boundless energy, unwavering spirit, and unshakable inner peace. Lesson 8. How I Conquered Worry real-life stories of triumph over trouble. All right, my fellow worry warriors, let's wrap up this series with a dose of real-world inspiration. We've talked about the theory, the philosophy, and the strategies for overcoming worry. But now, let's hear from the trenches, from real people who've faced down the worry monster and emerged victorious. These stories are like beacons of hope, shining a light on the path to a worry-free life. They remind us that we're not alone in our struggles, that others have overcome similar challenges, and that we too can find peace, joy, and resilience. The Woman Who Found Strength in Service One woman, a widow struggling with depression and loneliness, found solace in helping others. She volunteered her time offered support to those in need, and discovered that the more she gave, the more she received. Her story echoes the ancient wisdom of the Golden Rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. By focusing on the needs of others, she was able to transcend her own worries and find a renewed sense of purpose and meaning. The Businessman Who Embraced the Power of Prayer a businessman, burdened by financial worries and health problems, turned to prayer in his darkest hour. He surrendered his problems to a higher power and found a newfound sense of peace and clarity. His story reminds us that we're not alone in our struggles, that there's a source of strength and wisdom available to us if we're willing to ask for help. The Athlete Who Conquered Worry Through Exercise a former Olympic athlete, plagued by anxiety and insomnia, discovered that physical activity was his secret weapon against worry. By pushing his body to its limits, he was able to quiet his mind and find inner peace. His story echoes the stoic principle of men sana in corpore sano, a healthy mind in a healthy body. By taking care of our physical health, we can also improve our mental and emotional well-being. The writer who learned to laugh at himself. A writer prone to hypochondria and self-doubt found freedom from worry by learning to laugh at himself. He realized that his fears were often exaggerated 
and that by taking himself less seriously, he could lighten his load and enjoy life more fully. His story reminds us of the importance of humor and perspective, of not taking ourselves too seriously, and of finding joy in the absurdity of life. The Teacher Who Found Peace in the Present Moment A teacher, overwhelmed by the demands of her job and family life, discovered the power of living in day-tight compartments. By focusing on the present moment, she was able to let go of the past and future worries that were draining her energy and stealing her joy. Her story echoes the stoic principle of amor fati, or love of fate. By accepting what is and focusing on the present moment, we can find peace and contentment. These are just a few examples of the countless stories of people who've conquered worry and found a more peaceful and joyful way of life. Their stories remind us that worry is not our master. It's a habit that can be broken, a challenge that can be overcome. By applying the principles and techniques we've explored in this series, you too can transform your relationship with worry. You can learn to quiet your mind, calm your emotions, and create a life that's filled with peace, joy, and purpose. Remember, as the great Ralph Waldo Emerson said, finish each day and be done with it. You have done what you could. Some blunders and absurdities no doubt crept in. Forget them as soon as you can. Tomorrow is a new day. You shall begin it serenely and with too high a spirit to be encumbered with your old nonsense. So, let go of your worries, my friends. Embrace the present moment, focus on the good, and trust in the wisdom of the ages. Your journey to a worry-free life starts now.